and what it truly means to each and every believer to know that you have risen. Because what it does is that it secures our eternity. We give you thanks for doing the work that you do. Lord, be with us as we continue in this service, as we look into your word, as we take it into our hearts and hide it, and use it as a witness later when someone asks us about the, the work that is in you. We love you. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray for thanks. Amen. Just an announcement after service, of course, today we're going to have the kids hunting Easter eggs. We're going to put you adults to work. I need you to go out front. Don't leave on us. And line the sidewalks of the point to guard the little children from the road as they collect like their eggs. It won't take long. They know how to pick those eggs. If we can get them to pick up sticks like they do eggs, we can have a stick for your yard. Amen. Amen. Before we get started, my daughter texted me a joke yesterday and I thought I would share it with you. She said, what do you call a bunch of rabbits marching in a line backwards? And the answer, of course, is a receding hairline. <laughs> now, if, if you're blessed with that, then it's probably not as funny as it is to those who are not blessed with it, but they enjoy that joke as well. Today, the sermon is entitled, The Stone Speech. We're so glad that you're with us today. Inside your bulletin, you'll see uh, the verses that we're going to use. They're in the order that we're going to use them on. In the back, there's a spot for you to take notes. If I say something that, that grabs your attention, take it home, use it as a Bible study, and come back and share with us what God tells you about the message today. So nice to see so many familiar faces here, some that I uh, haven't seen in a long time. And it just makes me feel like home, you know what I mean? Today we're going to start the sermon with a question. Have you ever been isolated? Yes. Prisons use isolation as a form of punishment for prisoners who are being bad, breaking the rules. NASA has just come out and announced one of the greatest problems they have with sending our astronauts to Mars is the isolation they're going to incur for the seven month to 12 month trip to get to Mars. I'm not sure how the astronauts will handle that isolation. In Genesis, God looked down at Adam and said it was not good for man to be alone, so he created a help man, he created Eve. Now, I don't know if you've seen the movie Cast Away, where Tom Hanks was stranded on that desert island and he created his best friend out of that soccer ball named Wilson. Funny thing is, I could totally see myself doing that if I was in that situation. Just to have someone to talk to. Today, we're going to look at the Easter story from the viewpoint of isolation and what God did to destroy the isolation. Our story begins in Mark chapter 16. And it's about three ladies who gather a bunch of spice and they get to the tomb for Jesus. Mary Magdalene. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and so on. Now, it was a custom of that day to go to your to loved one's burial site and to apply spices around them so they did not smell. And they were on their way, and they asked this question in verse 3. They say, they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb for us? Now, asking that question, we can sort of come to the conclusion that first of all, they knew that there was a stone that was put in place in front of Jesus' tomb. We could come to the conclusion that they knew that they, those three ladies themselves, were not physically able to remove that stone. And as far as they knew, that stone was still there. So they asked the question. You see, they were worried about the isolation that the stone created. That they could not do what they wanted to do for the body of Jesus, for their Savior. And it brings us to our first point. The stone speaks of the despair of death. The stone blocked the way to the tomb. Those on the outside of the tomb could not get in. And those on the inside of the tomb could not get out. Or so they thought. Death isolates us from our loved ones. You see, when God rolled away the stone, he destroyed the isolation of death. Amen. He conquered it. And it's one of the greatest uh, 
things that we have as believers, knowing that when a loved one passes, that we're going to see them again. You have that confidence and faith. You see, when grief manifests in us because of the death of a loved one, I'm not completely sure that, that all that grief is for them. It's really for us because they're taken away from us. And we won't not allow to have a, a relationship here on this, this plane, this earth. Death in the grave could not keep Jesus in the tomb. Amen. Jesus arose and conquered death for us. They destroyed the isolation of death. And now it is a doorway to an eternity. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 58 reads this way. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Now the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives, the, gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always exhaling in the Lord's work, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Praise God for the work that he did when he removed that stone. Amen? Amen. Amen. Brings us to our second point. The stone speaks of the effects of the enemies of Jesus. You see, the stone was sealed by the Roman Empire. At the request of the priest and the Pharisees. Matter of fact, the priests and the Pharisees were so afraid, so worried about the dead Jesus, they requested guards to stand guard the dead body in the tomb. But because of Jesus' actions on the cross, he defeated his enemies. Those guards couldn't keep him in. That stone couldn't keep him in. Because he is the true Son of God. So who, you may ask, who were, God, who were Jesus' enemies that he defeated? Well, the Bible tells us about the calls of the children of Satan in John 8, 44. They're the demon forces that are described to us in Ephesians chapter 6. Jesus conquers all of his foes. Colossians chapter 2, verses 12 through 15. Read this way. Having been buried with him in baptism... You were also raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And when we were dead in trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive with him and forgave us of all of our trespasses. He erased the certificate of debt with its obligations that was against us and opposed to us and has taken it out of the way by nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and disgraced them publicly. He triumphed over them by him. Amen. Those were the enemies. They were defeated when Jesus completed his work on the cross. You see, by God removing the stone and Jesus completing his work, Jesus broke the walls of isolation that Satan and his enemies tried to put up between you and him. Brings us to our third point. The stone speaks of anything that separates us from our Savior. You see, back in Mark, the women were feeling helpless because of the stone that was placed in front of the tomb. They believed the stone was still there in their mind, logically, keeping them from the work that they wanted to do because of they loved Jesus. But here's something I want you to notice. This is the key to the entire sermon. Matter of fact, it is so important that I really need your attention. So what we're going to do is bow your heads while I pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would clear every mind here. That you would clear every heart here. I know that there's been so much that has been going on, and I know the importance of today, and I know there's a lot still to come. But Lord, I ask that you would clear their hearts and their minds to be willing to accept this key of the sermon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I missed this for years. It's so subtle in the scriptures that I missed it for years. And now I'm going to share it with you, to you today. The women in Mark chapter 16 were on their way to apply spices to the body of Jesus. They knew that there was a stone that was placed at the tomb. They knew 
that they were not strong enough to remove that stone. And in their mind, logically, that stone was still there. Here's the key. Here's the key. Even though logically they knew that there was no way to be successful in completing that, min that ministry for Jesus, they kept coming. Amen. They kept coming. That's the key. That's the key for you and that's the key for me. They kept coming. See, sin isolates people from Jesus. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, Indeed, the Lord's hand is not too short to save, and his ear is not too deaf to hear. But your iniquities have built barriers between you and your God, and your sins have made him hide his face from you, that he does not listen. This sums it all up. This is what I'm telling you. I'm telling you today that God, rolling away that stone and Jesus completing the work that he came here to do, destroyed all isolation from death, and from the enemies to stop you from coming to see him, to know him. There is no excuse for why you cannot get to Jesus. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, or if you're watching us by the internet, or if you're listening to us by the CD ministry, and you don't know Jesus, don't stop at the excuses that Satan has given to you right now not to accept him as your personal savior. Because I know that there's a war going on in your mind, and I know that human logic tells you that, that you tell yourself that you're not good enough, or you tell yourself that, that you've done so much in the past, there's no way God will forgive you, or, you, or you're not good enough, there's no way that you can live a Christian life, and you don't want to be a hypocrite. I know all those excuses are coming through your mind, but you need to apply the key. Don't stop coming. Don't stop coming. Don't buy into the human logic. Just like those three women did not buy into the logic that they were not going to be able to put those spices around Jesus. Don't stop coming. If you don't give your life to Jesus today, don't stop seeking Him. Don't stop coming because He has destroyed all barriers that were in your path. Maybe you're here today and you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Maybe you're listening to us by CD or watching us by the internet. And maybe your walk has sort of suffered. Because of sin. Maybe it's your uh, prayer life is not where it needs to be. Maybe you're not reading scripture where you need to do. Maybe you're, you just have walked away from God. But I'm here to tell you today, don't stop coming. Don't quit. Whatever human logic, whatever excuse that Satan is, uh, is giving to you, don't buy into those things. Don't stop, stop coming. God is all powerful. He had taken care of it. When he rolled away the stone, Jesus took care of it on the cross for you. The way to God is clear and it is open. He has already removed the stone and you can reach him at the throne. Amen. Jesus welcomes all that keep coming, even when they believe it to be helpless. Satan fills their head with excuses. Those who trust in him will not be isolated from him. I know, folks, that life sometimes overwhelms you with busyness. I know that your life as a Christian sometimes suffers because of the amount of work at home and work, and we get out of, out of the, the abilities or get out of the, the habits of going to church or reading our scriptures or praying with our family. We get out of working for God and living a life that we should be living. Can you honestly sit there and tell yourself today that your walk is as strong as it is as it is today as it was when you first gave your life to him. It is so easy sometimes to get out of church and miss a couple of Sundays and the next thing you know it's three months. It's so easy to let busyness of life and the excuses that are logical, humanly logical, to buy into them and stop serving God. But I'm here to tell you, you need to take the attitude as these three women did. They love Jesus so much even though they knew humanly, it was humanly impossible to do what they were going to do. They loved him so much. They still made the trip. They still got up that morning. They still gathered the spices and they still went. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you're going to get up and you're not going to feel like serving God. Sometimes you're not going to feel like going to church. Sometimes you're not going to feel like praying. But you still got to get up and you still got to go. Amen. Because God did the work for you. 
He removed the barriers. And you need to keep coming. If you love Jesus like these three women love Jesus, you need to keep coming. Yes, well, you should hear what this church did to me. I don't care what that church did to you. You need to keep coming. Well, I know, but work's got me working 60, 70 hours a week. I don't care. You need to keep coming. Well, I got family problems. I don't care. You need to keep coming. Because if we really understood God, we knew. If we're having trouble with our relationships, if we're having struggling with our, our walks with God, if we're having trouble financially, the best place for you to be is with God. Amen. Amen. Your faith in being strong will get you through. So if you take anything away from this sermon today, take this, take the advice of those three women. No matter if you think it's impossible, keep coming. Keep coming. God is waiting for you. The throne is open. That day when Jesus died on the cross for your sin, the curtain was torn and the veil was open. And the Holy of Holies is now available to each and every one of you through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, who sits at the right hand of the throne for you. Keep coming. God sent his only son to die on the cross for our sins. And while he was here, he taught you about him so that you could get close to him. Keep coming. Not only that, the Holy Spirit gave the word to write it down and he promised to keep it pure. And it's in our hands today. Keep coming. In some countries, this is outlawed. Pretty soon it will be here too. But in some countries, this is outlawed. But they still get the word. Keep coming. Because I'm here to tell you, you're going to experience exactly what those three women experienced when they got there. You know what they experienced? They experienced no barriers. The stone was already rolled away. The things that they thought was going to stop them to know their Jesus was gone. And I'm here to tell you that God loved you so much, he removed all those barriers for you today. Amen. The isolation is over. We as humans are not meant, not created, and we don't do well with isolation. And God has cleared the path. So you're right, I don't know what your life has been like, or is like right now. I don't know the pressures that you're under. I don't know the hours that you work. I don't know any of those things. But I do know this. God is waiting for you. And there is no excuse viable in this world that would stop you from serving your God. Just keep coming and allow Him to show you. You see, when God rolled away the stone and Jesus completed His work on the cross, He destroyed the isolation that we received from the original Adam's sin. From the original wall that Satan put up when Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, it's torn down now. It's gone. Amen. You want to know Jesus? Then keep coming. Jesus conquered the death, the grave, and sin for us on the cross. Amen. Keep coming. Jesus is always approachable now. He's approachable now. When you're on your couch at home, he's approachable. When you're in the car driving, he's approachable. When you're here, this church of his, he's approachable on the street, walking down the sidewalk. Jesus is approachable and available for you. There is no reason that you cannot know Jesus, or no reason that you cannot have a close walk with God. You just have to keep coming. For he is risen. He is risen indeed. Let me end with this story. There was a little boy on Easter Sunday, and he was in church with his family. And the deacon of that church came up to him, and he asked that little boy, he said, did you find Jesus today? The little boy looked at him and said, I didn't know he was lost. He said, but I will tell you something. I know that I was lost. And Jesus found me. Amen. He's waiting for you today to find you. His arms are open. The work has been done. 
All you have to do is keep coming. Bow your heads with me. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can change that. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. For all those that will open the door, I will come in and suck with you. He will make his life with you. There is only one way to heaven, folks. And that's through Jesus Christ. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't pay your way to heaven. Only one way. And that's the redeeming blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can change that. All you have to do is say this prayer. You don't have to say it out loud, but you do have to mean it. And if you say this prayer, I'm going to ask you to raise your head and I'm going to ask you three questions. And look at me. Just look at me until I address you. I want to ask you three questions. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I'm lost and I need you in my life. Replace my will with yours, and I will follow you for an eternity. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. With every head still bowed and every eye still closed. If you said that prayer today, and you meant it, just raise your head and look up at me. I want to ask you three questions. Would there be one? Did you say that prayer? Okay, just keep looking at me. Is there another one? Just nod your head when I ask you these questions. Did you say that prayer in heaven today? Are you ashamed of what Jesus did for you today? In a minute, we're going to give the invitation. Scripture says that if we're ashamed in front of the folks, you'd be ashamed of us in front of the Father. I'm going to ask you to come down so that we can celebrate with you and you can talk to the council for just a minute. Can you do that for me? Maybe you're here today and you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Maybe God's working with your heart. This altar is open for you as well. Maybe you stopped coming. Maybe you bought into the human logic. Maybe you bought in that, the, that it was impossible, <clears throat> impossible to get your walk back. You stopped coming. Now's a good day to start coming again. This altar is over for you. We have prayer for you standing by and counselors as well. If you're listening to us by CD or watching us via the internet, if you said that prayer today, congratulations and welcome to the family of God. My heart's desire is for you to come here to Shining Light and tell us about your decisions so that we can help you grow. But if you have a home church, that's a Bible-believing, God-fearing, Jesus-loving church. And I encourage you to go to your pastor and tell them the decision that you made and allow them to grow. There is no reason, no viable reason, that you should not serve your God. He's destroyed the isolation of death. He's destroyed the isolation of the enemy has. God is available. All right, you may look up. Brother Barry, you may Won't you stand for me, please?